You mentioned something um, that eventually we should spend more time talking about, but I think I'm going to pivot to that and then we can kind of return. Um, you talked about um, when you were talking to this DJ in Kent, you've mentioned that you, upon listening to your conversation again, you've noticed that you were somewhat copying some of the sounds or maybe... Yeah, not not copying right. exactly. Um, like sounding like the person, right? Like some yeah. sort of alignment, because I, I that reminded yeah. me of alignment theory. And I wanted to ask you because you wrote an article where you, I think it was about Megan, uh, Megan yes. Markle. I don't know anything about yeah. celebrities. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, where she changed her speech um, to sound more like a British person. So perhaps you could tell us more about that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it's they're called accommodation strategies. Mm, okay. um, and I mean, you know, most people, not everyone, but most people will alter features of their speech or the way that they communicate, depending on who it is they're speaking to. Um, mm -hmm. So this is why we get parents complaining that they can't understand teenagers and stuff like that. You know, there's just different um, different ways that we speak to people, depending on things like how well we know them and on hierarchical right. um, differences and all this kind of thing, whether we want to fit in or not and so on. Um, and, yeah, I was asked wh about whether um, Meghan Markle had changed the way that she spoke um, in the process of um, becoming part of the royal family. Um, and I, I listened to her vowels and actually I did um, an article in the conversation with a couple of mm -hmm. um, other phonetics colleagues um, and we analysed some of her vowels um, to see if there was any movement towards um, a, uh, towards British English and we, we didn't find that there was in fact in one case we found that it was sort of moving more towards a, a more extreme American version than a British version um, but one of my colleagues looked at um, her intonation and um, a feature of English intonation that you don't get so much in American English um, is called the full rise so it's something like um, yes um, so you don't get that sort of pattern so much in American English so um, something uh let's think of a longer sentence um something like um oh are those for me that sort of thing so if if, if she was in a crowd and somebody was giving right. her some flowers um and my colleague noticed that she picked up this pattern which is quite a british sounding pattern um whereas american speakers will tend to use a, a rise um mm -hmm. are those for me that sort of thing um are those for me uh which is um in british english it's considered um more dominant from a speech point of view um, not mm. that you necessarily think you are dominant but from a um, an interlocutor point of view it's it's seen like that so um it, so the patterns are used differently in british and american english with american speakers tending not to use it so it's a much more sort of tentative sounding thing and uh, my colleague jeff lindsay wrote something um looking at that and saying that uh, she seems to have picked up this feature so um this was seen as something that was sort of accommodating to right. british speakers um by using this pattern it was more a pattern they were used to and less um less dominant so therefore less kind of demanding sounding right um and um softer more tentative that sort of thing so um it was looking at, at whether she was doing that and i mean we didn't have an awful lot of footage to be honest and and i spent quite a lot of time trying to see if there were um uh if there was footage of her online where she was just speaking before harry um mm -hmm. and of course you know there's a lot of her acting which isn't the same and there's a lot of her being interviewed which isn't the same either really right. um but i couldn't see any particular evidence that she was using this pattern prior to this but then mm. you might only use it for a particular kind of interaction so um so tricky to know exactly what was going on there but it is seen as a, a very british sounding intonation interesting pattern. it's interesting because i i was thinking about um spanish and when i lived in spain i felt like i was picking up some of the nuances of the accent while living in Andalusia, for example. But then when I moved to Mexico and I was speaking Spanish in Mexico, I was picking up some of the nuances of accent in Mexico. So I think yeah. in a way I'm thinking this is something that we do unintentionally, perhaps. Mm, right. Mm, mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Huh. I think it's a subconscious thing. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Very I mean, I think there are definitely people who do it on purpose. 
Huh. Um, I, I, that must I mean, be cognitively demanding, I guess, to be yes, doing that. But, you know, if, if you're strongly motivated to do this for a particular reason, right. um, then you can have coaching um, from speech coaches to um, produce things in a particular way. So, uh, I mean, you know, the, the great rhetorical speakers, um, many right. of them may have done this naturally, but they would have rehearsed things um, usually over and over again before they produced them. Um, but it's, it's not out of the question that somebody might go to a speech coach and say, um, you know, I need help sounding this more persuasive. What should I do? And they'll say, well, you know, in order to do this, you can use this sort of pattern um, and that will have this effect on an audience rather than using that sort of pattern, which has a different sort of effect. Um, and right. it wouldn't surprise me at all if there were people out there who took advantage of that. And in fact, you know, I mean, the the famous example in in um, in British politics is Margaret Thatcher, right. who um, who took speech lessons I don't even know if it was elocution um, but it was lessons to make her voice sound more um, more dominant um, mm. because she was accused of sounding shrill and female voices come off badly in just about every way quite frankly um, but she, she she lowered her pitch range um, and her pitch range was much more narrow um, and, and and she spoke more slowly um, if you kind of watch footage of her over time and that sort of way of speaking is much more authoritative and you know clearly she she went and had some lessons on this so if you are mm. that strongly motivated person then there's no reason why you can't have lessons to do this um, mm -hmm. but there are some people who are just naturally gifted speakers and some people who are um, very aware of the power of speech like Winston Churchill was supposed to be for example right um, and know what to say at the right time in order to get a reaction that will, um, you know, bring things together or tear things asunder. So, yeah. Interesting. Very is that fresh. something that is regional? Like you were talking about accents and way, the way of speech. Is the power of persuasion or speech persuasion kind of more universal, more general, or would that also be regionally specific? Um. Well, I can only really speak for the UK, but in, in the UK, there are accents that people think are ignorant sounding. Really? So if you if you adopt one of these or if you have one of these accents, it doesn't matter whether you are the most informed person in the world. If you speak a truth using this accent, you, you are much like less likely to have that accepted than wow. if somebody with a more standard sounding accent speaks that same truth hmm. um well. so uh there's definitely that going on in in britain i mean I, there's there's some of this in the states although i'm not an an, an expert yes. in, on um, other varieties particularly but i mean um for example varieties from um the south are <laughs> I was um, just considered there. you know to have a particular sort of um <laughs> stereotypical um personality yeah. than others and you know if you've got the sort of brooklyn accent then that has a connotation and so on um which is very different from um i don't know the sort of network englishy sort of accent that you get so um it's it's it can be the case that if you are using a particular sort of accent your views can be discounted just because you're not speaking it in an accent that's considered to be authoritative 